Good afternoon, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirbygato, and I am coming to you today on December the 28th. We are moving forward into this week as we continue to move towards the sprint into 2018. Oh my goodness, I am so excited about 2018, and I am praying that after you hear Scripture and God open up your understanding in greater measure today that you too will jump on board and be excited for 2018 and what God has for us. Amen. I see a few of you coming on here. As I say hello, I see Kathy Forbes and Nancy Russo, Terry Jackson, Joanne. I also see uh, uh, Nancy. Hey, Nancy, good to see you. I also see you, Anastasia. God bless you. I can't see everybody that comes on here, but it scrolls up a few people that come on here. Hey, Krista Huerta, God bless you. So good to see you, sister. We're going to have an awesome day in the Lord. I love you, Crystal. We're going to just see the word explode and come to life as God fills us with hope and encouragement in Jesus' name. Hey, Priscilla Westover, God bless you. Hey, Kim Mitchell, so good to see you. Hey, Jessalyn, it is awesome to have you on here. Oh my goodness, God has just been filling me with so much hope and so much joy that He wants me coming on here a little bit more frequently during the holidays in order to give you the word of encouragement, word of truth, as we are approaching the New Year's. Amen. Hey, Debbie Earp, so good to see you, sister. I also see you, Sue Gailey, so awesome to see you on here. Hey, Cassie, God bless you. Thank you for being here. It is going to... Oh, thank you, Cassie. God bless you. Amen, Debbie. We're going to have an awesome time in the Lord. Hey, Cozy, I hope you enjoyed your birthday. You're going to have a super duper time. That is like my saying lately. It's super duper. It's not just super, but it is super duper. And what is super duper? That is a double portion of super. Amen. So we are going to have a super duper awesome time in the Lord. Are you ready for what scripture Holy Spirit has today? Oh my goodness. He already has me having so much Hebrew for you. Y'all can't see all of it. But oh my goodness, we are going to get into some Hebrew that is going to blow your mind as Holy Spirit brings us revelation. So as we enter today... I pray the mind of Christ Jesus be in and upon you. I pray the Spirit of the Lord be upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray the abundant blessings of God's Word, hallelujah, His Word and truth come in and upon you as He fills you with a hope of Christ Jesus in you, the what? Hope of glory and makes resurrection power known to your person. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Hey, Mary Graham, I see you. Hey, Sharon, so good to see you. Hey, Harry. God bless you. So good to see you on here. And I see a few more people. Hey, Sarah, God bless you. And oh, Sarah Webb's on here. And it just reminded me, would you believe that God has got my schools and my books in prison ministering to people that are in there? Is that not awesome? God is so good. He's connected us <clears throat> with a ministry for bringing women out of sex trafficking. And he's connected us in ministry work and putting the books in the ministry of prison ministry. So God is doing super things. And as he's stretching out my tent pegs, he's stretching out your tent pegs too. In the name of Jesus. So the scripture that God has for us today, are you ready? It is Joel 2. Joel 2, hallelujah. God kept speaking to me about Joel 2. And I absolutely love Joel 2. It is absolutely an amazing scripture, and it is the emphasis that God keeps telling me, Robin, as he keeps telling me, we're going to experience more joy than we have ever experienced in our lifetime. We are going to experience that in 2018, and I gave the word picture that God kept giving me with Winston Churchill last week. Everywhere I turned, it was Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill, and we also went to watch The Darkest Hour, that movie about Winston Churchill last Friday. And it is absolutely amazing. I love how in the darkest of time, God brings a boldness like a lion in his righteous people to rise up in the righteousness of Christ Jesus to enter the victory. And that is what's happening in this time right now 
as you are overcoming the attacks of the enemy, there is a boldness, there is a righteousness of Christ Jesus in you. You have been hungry and thirsty for righteousness, hallelujah. And that is your reward, hallelujah, in Psalm 24, verses 4 and 5. That reward of righteousness from the Lord God of our salvation. That reward, hallelujah, is a boldness of faith that God gives to you and I as we enter into His promises, which are what? Yes and amen. And Winston actually means settlement of joy. Is that not amazing? God kept telling me, Robin, I'm going to bring more joy for my people. Joy, joy, joy. And then, as I kept seeing the name Winston Churchill, immediately all I could see was God's church. It's going to be a city set on a hill. We are not going to be hidden in this hour. We are going to enter such triumph and such hardest season, such victory, that we are going to shine brighter than ever before, that we have ever, ever experienced in our lifetime. The church is not going to be hidden we are going to be set on a hill where we will be like a light, a city set on a hill. And that is what I kept getting out of the last name, Church Hill. And Winston actually means, are you ready? It means settlement of joy. Is that not powerful? And God kept saying, Robin, I am bringing my church in that place of Isaiah 60 verse 1. Well, we will arise, we will shine, and he will bring nations to the brightness of our rising. Isaiah 60 verse 2. And those nations are going to see us because we are going to be a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. And we are going to be known for our joy in the name of Jesus Christ. As we enter into today's word, let us go to Joel 2, and I'm actually going to be reading out the Amplified. I love the Amplified version, but I still go to the King James Version when I go to the Strong Skin Cordance in order to look at the two translations to make sure the most accurate translation is given to you as God gives me Hebrew, and we're going to get into the ancient Hebrew, which is also known as Paleo Hebrew. That is where you look at the symbols of the pre-Canaanite Hebrew letters that were pre-Canaanite and almost like caveman language. So those are symbols that we take and we look at those symbols and what all of those symbols mean. And when you put those symbols together, you get a word picture and it just adds more revelation and more depth to the scripture that absolutely amplifies it. We're going to start in Joel 2 and we're going to look specifically, let me get to that specific place in Joel 2. We're going to begin in verse 23. Verse 23, amen. Scripture says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord. There's that word joy, amen. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord, your God. For He gives you the former or early rain in just measure and in righteousness. Woo! Hallelujah. Listen to this again. Because Holy Spirit was telling us at the beginning of this Facebook Live that God is going to add more righteousness to us. Now listen to this again because you're going to understand. Do you understand that the enemy is not intimidated by anything other than one thing? And that is the righteousness of Christ Jesus in you. Do you know that you can be a Christian and you can do the ministry work of the Lord and do it in the righteousness of Christ Jesus? What does that mean? It means you're not doing it in your own strength. You're not doing it in your own righteousness because our righteousness is but filthy rags. It's self-righteousness. But you're doing it in the righteousness of the Lord, which means what? You have been humbled. How have you been humbled? Through trials, through tribulations, through the testing of your faith, where you feel like you're to the end of yourself. You almost feel like you're hanging off the edge of a cliff. Well, God is going to bring life. He's going to bring the power of truth to you to give you that light and that life that will flood you, hallelujah, with the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Matthew 6, 5 says, Blessed are those, Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those that are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Why? For they shall what? Be filled. And when we are filled with that righteousness, that is actually our ammunition for prayer. It is our ammunition for prophesying. It is our ammunition for ministering. It is our ammunition for being a Christian. And we see this 
in Revelation 19, as we see in Revelation 19, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of all prophecy. And immediately after that, the vision of what the spirit of prophecy looks like comes forth. And that vision was what? Jesus is coming back on a white horse with his robe dipped and dyed in blood. Why? Because he's already defeated the enemy. And he is just putting it in the enemy's face. Look, your blood is on my garments. I have defeated you. As revealed in Isaiah 63. When we see prophecy of Messiah coming up from Bozra and Edom. And he is coming because he has tread the winepress and that, that blood of where he has trampled the enemy in your life is on those garments as revealed in Isaiah 63. And I love how Holy Spirit tells me, Robin, tell the devil, remind him that he is defeated and that Isaiah 63 declares that his blood is splashed, his defeat is made known, and it is on Messiah's, it is on Yeshua's garments. And we see when Jesus is coming back in Revelation 19, 11, riding back on a white horse, he's doing what? He is going to wage war in righteousness. That's what scripture says. So our ammunition in warfare and spiritual warfare is the righteousness of Christ Jesus. So as we go through trials and tribulations and the testing of our faith and the suffering of temptations, it causes us to be humbled, humbled. Or can I say humiliated? That is actually the correct word in Greek for humility is humiliated. So if you feel as though you have been in trials and tribulations where you have been humiliated, guess what? You have been humbled and are prepared, hallelujah, to receive in the name of Jesus. And when we look at Joel 2, we are looking at a people group who have been through such trials, through such tribulations, who think they've lost everything and are not even sure if they're going to win. And Joel 2 is for that group where it says not only are you going to win, but you're going to break through and you're going to see the power of God restore not just exactly, but a double portion of what you have lost. Understand this, saints of God, when we are looking to get back what was taken, we're only wanting one-to-one. -one. We're only, okay, this happened to me, so I want this thing back. No, that is not God's math. That is not God's word. God's word says that when you have victory, when you have breakthrough, that he brings a double portion, not a single portion. He is not a double portion God. So when we look at today's word, understand that God is removing fears. He's removing timidity. He's removing double-mindedness. And he is removing rejection and shame in order to cause you to wake up, to receive, hallelujah, this righteousness which he is bringing to you in power so you can see the victory because it is that righteousness that he is going to pour into you, as we even see in Psalm 24. That group of people with clean hands and a pure heart, who do not lift up their heart to an idol or swear by their lips anything false. That is why it's so important to watch our lips and to guard our hearts, to guard our minds right now. It's this people who ascend the hill of the Lord in Psalm 24. And it's this generation that God refers to that seeks what? His face. They seek his face, hallelujah. And God says, unto that generation, they shall be rewarded with what? Righteousness from the Lord God of their salvation. And immediately, once the reward comes to them, hallelujah, immediately there is a turn, hallelujah. There is a turnaround and they prophesy in victory. Open up, you ancient gates. Be ye opened up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty in battle, hallelujah, that he will come in in Jesus' name. Do you understand that the righteousness that you walk in has the anointing when the Holy Spirit comes upon you of the Lord of hosts? Hallelujah. And whenever the Lord of hosts showed up in the Old Testament, it was always to declare the message 
and the power was in the message. Whenever you see in the Old Testament, and I get in more into it in Book Nine of God's Bible School of Prophets, when we do the Spirit of the Lord and the purpose and dimensions of the Spirit of the Lord, and whenever the Spirit of the Lord is present, you will also see most times that the Lord of Hosts is made known. And when the Lord of Hosts is made known, it is for one purpose and one purpose alone. It is for the message to go forth. And whenever you see the message that comes forth by the Lord of hosts, there is always breakthrough, there is always power, there is always deliverance. Amen. And that is what we are looking at. God, we are so humiliated. We are so humbled. We know that there is nothing good in us except Christ Jesus alone. Hallelujah. And God, we receive His righteousness. And as He fills you with more righteousness, you're going to rise up in power. And the message that He puts in your belly, in your heart, in your mind, in your mouth, hallelujah, it is going to come out like a sword. And you're going to see it performed in your life. Because the joy of the Lord is going to come on you, hallelujah, in this hour as we go over into 2018. And you are going to pray in tongues in greater measure for other servants of the Lord, for the saints. And you're going to pray for souls to come out of the pit of hell. God's going to give you more dreams, more visions. This past week, I have gotten more dreams and visions. And every time this entire week, ever since Christmas morning at 3.30 a.m., God is giving me more dreams and has me waking up praying in tongues for all that He has in store for those that need victory, those that are in darkness, those that need deliverance, those that need salvation, and for the church, saints of God. Be encouraged because this anointing is coming. So let's look at verse 23 one more time. Be glad, then you children of Zion. So immediately we see, be glad, or can we say rejoice, and that comes next. And rejoice in the Lord, your God, for He gives you the former or early rain in just measure and in righteousness. So this rain that we're looking at is a rain of righteousness. Let's go further. And He causes it to come down for you the rain, the former and the latter rain as before. Now this particular rain is also seen very clearly, actually, in Zechariah 10.1, which I have written a book on Zechariah 10.1, specifically with this verse in mind, but also with verse 3. So let's go there and get more understanding before we finish in Joel 2. So let's go to the book of Zechariah, and you're going to look at chapter 10. And again, I am going to be reading out of the Amplified. You are absolutely going to love this. Now listen to this because this particular rain in Joel 2 is also seen in Zechariah 10. And when you comprehend this rain, this rain is like a torrential downpour. It's the saying, it's raining cats and dogs. That is the best description of this rain because this rain in Hebrew actually means a torrential downpour. That is how this rain is described. Now understand the rain that is depicted in Joel 2. Listen to this depiction here in Zechariah 10 and you'll have better understanding. Amen. Zechariah 10 1. Ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter or spring rain. It is the Lord who makes lightnings which usher in the rain and give men showers and grass to everyone in the field. For the terraform, the household idols, have spoken vanity, emptiness, falsity, futility, and the diviners have seen a lie, and the dreamers have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore the people go away like sheep. They are afflicted and hurt because there is no shepherd. My anger is kindled against the shepherds who are not true shepherds, and I will punish the goat leaders, for the Lord of hosts has visited his flock, the house of Judah, and will make them as his beautiful and majestic horse in battle. Woo! Hallelujah. Listen to this part of verse 3 again. For the Lord of hosts 
has visited his flock. So when we are talking about this torrential downpour of Holy Spirit, we are talking about an infilling of righteousness that when he visits us, hallelujah, we will be like that beautiful, majestic horse in battle. Woo! Hallelujah. God says he visits Judah, Judah. And Judah, Judah means praise. Hallelujah. And it indicates Yud, Y-O-O-D. It has also a delet. So when you look at Judah, you are looking at, hallelujah, the power of God that opens a door by his mighty hand, hallelujah, that no man can shut in Jesus' name. So when we are looking now at Joel 2, let me put one more thing up here real quick. When we are looking at Joel 2, now liken it and connect Zechariah 10, 1. That, those few scriptures and that torrential downpour. That it seems like God's people are defeated. It seems like they're in captivity. And they're listening to all these false diviners that are operating and bringing no comfort. God says, I'm going to visit my people personally. And I'm going to bring such power of righteousness that when I raise my people up, they will be like a majestic horse in battle. That is what we're looking at. When we go specifically here to Joel 2, and also before I forget, because Holy Spirit's reminding me, before I forget, let's also read a couple scriptures after the war horse. It says in verse 4 of Zechariah 10, Out of him, Judah, shall come forth the cornerstone. Out of him, the tent peg. peg. Out of him, the battle bow. And every ruler shall proceed from him and they shall be like mighty men treading down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle and they shall fight because the Lord is with them and the oppressors riders on horses shall be confounded and put to shame and I will strengthen the house of Judah and I will strengthen the house of Joseph so when we are looking at the righteousness of Christ Jesus, it is a strength that we are fed from on high. This is revealed as it's prophesied about Messiah in Micah 5, 4. The prophecy of Messiah is that he would feed the flock of God in the strength of the Lord God, in the strength of his name. So when we are looking at strength, that also indicates righteousness as revealed even in Matthew 16 when Jesus tells Peter, Simon, Simon, I tell you, you are Petros, you are Peter, you are a rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. Jesus is not saying I'm going to build my church on Simon Peter. He is saying I'm going to build it on the strength of the righteousness that comes by Holy Spirit. Because Jesus told Peter that when Peter was asked by Christ, who do people say that I am? And he said, you are the son of the living God. You are Jesus Christ. He, Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. But my father who is in heaven has revealed this. And that is when he called Simon Peter. So what Jesus was saying in Matthew 16 is that he was going to build the church on the strength of the Lord God Almighty and on that right standing, on that right relationship of God to man through Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at Joel 2. Amen. Joel 2, 23. We're going to read it one more time before we go to verse 24. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he gives you the former or early rain in just measure and in righteousness, and he causes to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain as before. And the threshing floors shall be full of grain, and that shall overflow with juice of the grape and oil. And I will restore all Get all to you the years that the locusts 
have eaten the hopping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the crawling locusts, my great army which I sit among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord, your God, who has dealt wondrously, woo, hallelujah, with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. And you shall know and understand that I am in the midst of Israel. And I am the Lord your God. And there is none else. My people shall never be put to shame. And then immediately we see the prophecy of the outpouring of Holy Spirit. But today God wants me to focus on these particular Hebrew words about the latter rain and about the outpouring that's revealed here in Joel 2. When we look specifically at verse 24, it says that the threshing floor shall be full of grain, the vat shall overflow with juice of the grape and with oil. So let's look at these particular Hebrew words. The word wheat is actually bar. And I find that amazing because when grace came, grace set the bar higher. Grace gave us power. So when Jesus brought grace, hallelujah, the bar was raised. Amen. So when you have the true word, the wheat, in Jesus' name, that word in you, hallelujah, raises the bar because you have power to walk it out. Hallelujah. And those of you who do not have the baptism of Holy Spirit, God says He is going to bring it to you. And we're going to pray for that baptism at the very end of this Facebook Live. Hallelujah. It says this word wheat is bar, and it means wheat. But when you look at the two Hebrew letters, the pre-Canaanite symbols, they are bet and resh, B-E-T and R-E-S-H. Bet is the ancient symbol of a tent, and it means tent, house, household. It means family. And then resh, R-E-S-H, is the ancient symbol of a man's face, and it means head highest in household. So the word picture you have for bar, for wheat, is the house of the most high. Woo! Hallelujah. And when you're talking about wheat, you're talking about Mark 4, where the word of God that has been sown in you as you've been through the trials, as you've been through the tribulations, when this outpouring, this designated time, this appointed time of the Lord, when that outpouring of righteousness comes, hallelujah, it is the most high visiting your house. And bringing his house in and upon you. Whereas it is in heaven. Woo! Glory to God. It is in earth in Jesus' name. So that word picture for wheat is the house of the Most High. The next word we see in Joel 2.24 is wine press or wine vat. This word is the Hebrew word yakeb. Yakeb. And it actually means the fatness. Now, when we're talking about fatness in Scripture, fatness is a good thing because fatness means the best. It means the greatest. Because remember, every time the priest offered sacrifice in Leviticus upon the altar, God said he wanted the fat of the animal on the altar. And when you think about it, and I know it's true, when I eat me a piece of meat, that fat is the best thing on that piece of meat. So when we're talking about wine press, when we're talking about wine vat, it indicates the fatness, the richness that comes forth. It also means not only fatness, but it also indicates presses and wine press. When you look at this particular word, it actually indicates a fatness, a wine press, and it is composed of three Hebrew letters. Are you ready? They are Yud, Kuf, and Bet. Yud, Kuf, and Bet. So you have three Hebrew letters. Yud, Y-O-O-D. is an ancient symbol of an arm at work. And it means works make deed. Then you have Kuf. It's the back of a head. But it's also a sun rising. And Kuf has such great complexity. It is just absolutely amazing. Some spell it Q-O-P-H. Some spell it K-O-P-H. Some spell it K-O-O-F, but koof is just koofy, okay? So koof can be a back of a man's head, but it also can be a sun on the horizon. 
So, the symbolism means to rise up. It also means last, follow, and behind. Now, the last letter for wine press, Jacob, again is bet. B-E-T is the ancient symbol of a tent. It means family, house, household, and it indicates that family. The word picture for wine press, when you put these three words together, is the works that rise upon your house. Woo! Listen to this, saints of God. Listen to this, because we're going to end in the New Testament where Jesus is calling out the harvest. So listen to this word picture again for wine press. The works, whose works? God's works. The works that rise upon your house. That's Isaiah 60, verse 1. Amen. This particular word, wine press, comes from uh, the, the, the wine that we're going to see. This wine in Joel 2.24, that's the word I'm trying to get to, and we're going to get to the word that comes from wine. So the wine press is going to have wine in Joel 2.24. This word wine is actually unique to me because when I'm used to doing the word wine for like wine house or wine in Hebrew, it's generally yayin. But this particular word for wine here in Joel 2, which I found interesting in verse 24, is the Hebrew word teroshi. Teroshi. It's almost like saying tiroshi. Tiroshi. And it means grape juice as squeezed out. How many of you feel as though you have pressures coming in all around you? Well, that pressure, hallelujah, is to squeeze out that juice. And what is that juice? It is one thing and one thing alone. It is the righteousness, hallelujah, of Christ Jesus. That you don't even know the boldness that's inside of you until the circumstances rise against you. And when those circumstances surround you, you have a boldness of the righteousness of Christ Jesus in you that captures your mouth. And you're watching yourself speaking. It's almost like you're standing over here going, what am I saying? And you're over here speaking and you have no clue what's coming out of your mouth. Because Holy Spirit possesses you and takes over your mouth. And that sword is coming out of your mouth. That is the righteousness of Christ Jesus that wins all of your battles. Now remember that I told you in the teaching that I did specifically a couple of days ago on Tuesday. That God kept revealing to me that we've been trying to take back what's been taken from us. And we're totally distracted from what we've been given, which is what? A kingdom and people. God showed me here that these trials and tribulations in Joel 2, wake the people of Israel up, wake Judah up, so that they know the victory they've already been given from God. So that they know the victory for God's people. And that righteousness, that boldness comes up in Jesus' name. The Hebrew letters that actually form this word wine, tiroshi, are actually tob, yud, resh, vav, and sheen. Five Hebrew letters. Listen to those letters again. Tob, yud, resh, vav, and sheen. Now let's start with the first one. Tob, T-A-V. It's the ancient symbol of a cross, and it means sign, seal, mark, and covenant. It's a 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's the last letter. And then we have Yud. We've done Yud before. It's the arm. And it means the works, make, and deed. Y-O-O-D. And then we have Resh. We've done Resh many times. A man's face. It means head highest person. Then we have Vav. V-A-V. It's the ancient sum of a tent, peg, or a nail. And it means to add and secure. And finally, we have Sheen. S-H-E-E-N. It looks like teeth or jagged W. And it indicates to consume or devour as well as indicate fire. So are you ready for the word picture for this Hebrew word for wine? Tiroshe. It means the covenant of the works of the Most High that are added unto you and consume you. Oh my goodness. You're going to get it when we get to the New Testament and get to Jesus talking about the harvest. Listen to this one more time. The covenant of the works of the Most High that are added unto you 
and consume you. Woo! Hallelujah. Do you understand that we do the greater works? John 14, 12. We're going to do them. We are looking at that manifesting in this hour as we enter the joy of the Lord, as the Holy Spirit reigns in and upon us in righteousness, hallelujah, and brings us the works of God's covenant, and those works consume us. It is all we desire. It is what we live for. This word, teroshi, for wine, actually comes from the Hebrew word, yarash. And it means, are you ready? Now, this is the root word for wine, tiroshi. So when you're talking about this wine, this wine knows how to battle. This wine knows how to possess and to occupy and to take down the enemy. Why? Because the kingdom that is from above, hallelujah, has now reigned in and upon you. And you are filled, hallelujah, with the kingdom of heaven. And it battles on your behalf as the Lord of hosts in Jesus' name. So this root word for wine is yarash. And it means, are you ready? To occupy. It means to occupy by driving out. It means by driving out the previous tenants. It means possessing it in their place. Now think about this. Is this not crazy that the root word for this wine is yarash? And it means to occupy by driving them out and taking their place in order that what has been disinherited from you is now coming back into your inheritance, is now coming back into your possession. So it's not that you're just going to knock on the door and say, please give me my property back. No, you're going to drive the enemy out. Amen. It means to drive out. It means to seize. It means to inherit. It means to expel. It means to cast out. It means to consume. It means to destroy. It means to dispossess. It means to drive out. It means to enjoy. It also means to magistrate. It means to take possession. And it means a few more other things. Is that not amazing? And God told me, he said, Robin, this wine in Joel 2.24 is that new wine that Jesus refers to. He said, I came to bring new wine and I can't put it in the old skins lest the skins burst. But I've come to bring the new wine in to new wine skins. Hallelujah. And God reveals us, re reveals to us from Matthew 9 where Jesus said that. God reveals to us that that wine in Joel 2 is the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And that righteousness, that wine, it battles on our behalf. Hallelujah. It brings the enemy down. It utterly defeats him. And it causes him to know his complete defeat in Jesus' name. Now let's look at the word oil here in Joel 2.24. On the threshing floor, we're getting wheat, bar. We're getting at the wine press, Yakeb. We're getting wine, Tiroshi. And we're also getting oil. That word oil is Yitzar. And it means anointed. There's actually a composition of four Hebrew letters that compose Yitzar. It's Yud, Seid, Chet, Chet, and Resh. So let's look at these four Hebrew letters. Yud, Y-O-O-D, we've already done it, an arm at work, and it means works make deed. Then we have Seid, T-S-A-D-E. It's a fish hook. It means to catch, caught, desire, need. It also indicates delight. Then we have Chet, C-H-E-T. It actually is a symbol of a fence or an inner chamber, and it means to separate or secret place. And finally, we have resh, R-E-S-H, and it is a face of a man. It means head highest person. So, the word picture you have here for oil, for anointing, are you ready? Is to separate you unto the most high. Woo! By his hand, where the hand that has caught you has separated you unto him. Now listen to this again. The hand that has caught you has separated you unto the Most High. Do you see this? God has caught us. We are like a fish on a hook. Hallelujah. 
that we are called into those works. Where even though there's times we feel like resisting, like, God, can we not do it? I'm so tired of the warfare. You know, I have learned that I can complain in God and God can take my complaining. And I don't mean the complaining that he hated as with Israel when they came out of the Egypt into the wilderness. I don't mean that kind of complaining. I mean, God, I am worn down. You want me to encourage other people, God. God, I need encouragement. And you know, there is some of that complaining and I know that God is going to encourage me and he's going to strengthen me and I can just tell him because he can listen to me and I know what he's going to tell me anyway and I know that I'm going to do what God wants me to do anyway. But it's almost to that point where you're saying, God, am I going to be able to do what you told me to do? I am just so tired. I am weary. And God comes in with a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Exalting your horn like a wild ox. Giving you a new anointing as he smears you with it. Hallelujah. And by his hand, he catches you and he pulls you into this anointing. And it's like he grabs you and he separates you unto himself. Hallelujah. You know you are caught. You are a fish on that hook. Hallelujah. And you're coming in no matter how you feel in Jesus' name. So that should encourage many of you that you should be encouraged. No matter how you feel, God is going to catch you into this anointing. When his righteousness rains down in and upon you, it is going to pull you into this anointing, into this boldness, into this righteousness. And this particular Hebrew word brings a revealing. What is amazing is this Hebrew word also means oil as producing light. But are you ready? This Hebrew word also comes from sahar, the root word. And it means to glisten. It means to pour out and to make oil. So when we're talking about the light of Christ Jesus and the city set on a hill that cannot be hidden, that has that joy, we have that to hard. We are in that place where we are glistening, hallelujah, and that oil is like light in Jesus' name. Now, finally, we're going to do one more Hebrew word, and then I'm going to end with the New Testament. Amen. So this Hebrew word, God says he will restore all that the canker worm and the locusts have eaten. He will restore it a double portion in Jesus' name. This word restore, many of you know it. It's actually a variant of peace. It's shalom. And shalom here for restore means completed. It means to reciprocate, to make amends. It means to finish, to make good, to be at peace. It means perfect, perform. It means restitution. It means to reward. And it means to render and requite. Hallelujah. Do you understand that the peace of God is your victory? The peace of God battles on your behalf as God restores, as He brings restitution, as He brings requisition. Hallelujah. To what is yours according to his word in Jesus' name. The three Hebrew letters that for, form shalam, shalom, are sheen, laman, and mem. Now sheen, we've already done that. It looks like jagged teeth, jagged W. It indicates to consume. It indicates to devour. And it also is an indication of fire. It's used much in that fire context. Lamed, L-A-M-E-D, is an ancient symbol of a cattle goat that looks like a shepherd's staff that has a prick in the curvature, and that means tongue control and authority. And finally, mem, M-E-M, is an ancient symbol of a three-humped M that looks like water. And it means massive in the positive. It means chaos in the negative. It also indicates flooding. So the word picture you have here for peace, for restoration, is the tongue that consumes you massively and floods you. Woo! Hallelujah. Listen to this, saints of God. The tongue that consumes you massively and floods you. What does that remind you of? Acts 2 of the tongues of fire that were above their heads. That that tongue, who is that tongue? God. The word, hallelujah, that tongue consumes you. And when the word of God consumes you, hallelujah, it is the baptism of fire and Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ came to bring in Matthew 3. Hallelujah. So God says here, 
in Joel 2. As we end, I'm going to read you Joel 2 one more time. And then we're going to end with John 4, with three verses from John 4. Joel 2, 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he gives you the former or early rain in just measure and in righteousness. And he causes to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain as before. And the threshing floors shall be full of grain and the vat shall overflow with juice of the grape and oil. And I will restore all or replace for you the years that the locust has eaten. The hopping locust, the stripping locust, and the crawling locust, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously, woo, hallelujah, with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. And you shall know and understand and realize that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, the Lord, am your God. And there is no one else. My people shall never be put to shame. What has God had me teaching over the last three months about the assignment of rejection that is attached to shame and fear? God is saying, I'm going to remove shame. You're not going to feel rejection. You're not going to know fear. You're going to be filled with so much righteousness and be bold as a lion. And you're going to know the King of glory because you're going to know the glory of God. So as we end here, listen to John 4, verse 34, 35, and 36, and all of Joel 2 is a composition and foretelling even of these scriptures. John 4, 34, Jesus said to them, My food, my nourishment is to do the will, the pleasure of him who sent me and to accomplish and completely finish his work. Do you not say it is still four months until harvest time comes? Look! I tell you, raise your eyes and observe the fields and see how they already are white with harvest. Already the reaper is getting his wages. He who does the cutting now has his reward. For he is gathering fruit woo, hallelujah, unto life eternal. So that he who does the planting and he who does the reaping Rejoice together. Hallelujah. Do you see this, saints? He who does the reaping and he who does the gathering. Hallelujah. Rejoice to gather in Jesus' name. So as we end here, I'm going to pray for you. And we're going to believe an increased anointing of Holy Spirit to be in and upon God's Word today. Amen. We're going to believe the power of God's strength be in and upon you as He gives you the brightness of His anointing, that oil, that glistening oil, as you are separated unto Him in Jesus' name. And what is also interesting, I wanted to say this before I finished and ended with prayer, is that when we see this raining, this pouring out of righteousness, I saw in scripture where God was indicating the first month. And all I could do was think about, oh my goodness, as we enter into 2018, I am believing by faith, and you believe, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, that by faith, that that raining, that outpouring of righteousness, hallelujah, is coming this first month of 2018 in Jesus' name. And we're going to rejoice together, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. So in Jesus' name, I pray an increase of the anointing of Joel 2 upon your lives. I pray a torrential downpour of righteousness from the Lord God of your salvation be upon you, hallelujah, as he has caused you to be refined in the fire, in Jesus' name, to have clean hands and a pure heart, hallelujah, to ascend the hill of the Lord from glory 
to glory as you behold the glory of God, that you are being transformed into that likeness of that anointing, of that knowledge, of that wisdom, of that understanding. Hallelujah. As resurrection power floods you and fills you with the blessings from above of authority in heaven and that heaven is made near in Jesus' name. Yea, God, pour out the anointing of Matthew 3, 11 and 12. The baptism that Jesus Christ came to bring of Holy Spirit and fire. Pour out your anointing, Father, of Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus and baptize those that are hungry and thirsty. God, baptize them. Hallelujah. And your Holy Spirit and fire in the name of Jesus and bring your tongues of fire and consume us, Father God, as you lift us up in the anointing like eagle's wings. Hallelujah. That you strengthen us in the strength of your righteousness. Hallelujah. That you will fill us with a boldness of the spirit of prophecy that we will prophesy in the name of Jesus the testimony of Jesus Christ and the righteousness of your son God that has already delivered the victory that has already brought heaven near in Jesus name that God we will see our children come out of captivity we will see marriages restored we will see blessings and prosperity in this hour as we prosper in our soul God let us prosper in life and health in the name of Jesus and we speak to those gates of Egypt that have stored up the gold and silver and I call in Haggai too that once more Lord God you will shake the heavens and you will shake the earth and you will shake the treasuries of this world and as you sent your people out of Egypt with the gold and the silver God you will transfer the wealth of the wicked and you will bring it into the hands of the righteous in the name of Jesus Christ and God we will know it is harvest time we will be your laborers Woo! hallelujah forced out into your harvest field that our meat will be to do the will and the work of you father God in this earth to see many souls come out of darkness and into your marvelous light in Jesus name amen Woo! hallelujah God bless you I'll see you tomorrow amen